Hello, everybody. Welcome along to Sportsbet TV with me, Paul Alster. We are very excited here at Sportsbet as we look forward now to the Grand National on Saturday, the 13th of April. Still the world's greatest steeplechase, even if the challenge isn't quite what it was. And as you probably noted during the Topham Trophy on Friday of the National Fences, no fallers, just one unseated rider. And um, well, in many ways, that's good because we don't want to see any horses getting hurt. But it isn't the physical challenge it once was. But it is a great spectacle and a great spectacle it will be tomorrow afternoon, Saturday at four o'clock. And I'll have a lecture for you in that race and one other as well. If you're new to Sportsbet TV, well, I'm always looking for horses at good each way. Prices very often double figure odds. And that's what has helped us uh, pay the way um, for the best part of four years now on this service since we started at the height of the pandemic in July 2020. So if you are new to us, please press the subscribe button just below uh, this screen and you'll get all my free tips here each and every time I post them. Well, I only posted one tip last week. Actually, it didn't run very well at Kempton Spirit Mixer. Um, tracked them and then just didn't pick up. So maybe it had been out on the lash a bit the night before Spirit Mixer uh, didn't really run its race. But as I say, I have two for you here at uh, Sportsbet for Grand National Day. Um, I've been having a very good time of things over at Out in Front. First two days of the Grand National meeting with a couple of really nice winners. Uh, and if you want to find out about my selections, uh, four of them uh, for Grand National Day, uh, then you can check out uh, how to join me at Out in Front by clicking on the link in the description box just below this screen. Well worth getting involved. Remember as well, we're also getting into the uh, flat season, really getting underway with the big Craven meeting coming up at uh, uh, Newmarket Stones, National Fixture, Punchestown, Town, and so many other great meetings going forward to the first classic. But I'm going to take you to the first race at Aintree tomorrow because it's a three mile handicap hurdle run on soft ground, which is starting to dry out, but there could be some showers overnight that will keep the ground soft. 22 runners, so quite a puzzle. And the very warm favourite is West Balboa for the conquering Dan Skelton, who sent out a very good winner uh, of a handicap at um, Aintree on Friday. And West Balboa is up um, six pounds, six pounds higher than her win in this very race last year. She also had been targeted at this race once again, and there are a few trainers better than Dan Skelton at targeting them for a specific race. Going to be very much in the thick of the action, but at seven to two, there's not a lot of value in that price. Uh, the companion is Gwenny May Boy, who's won three out of its four races this season. Um, whether or not it's going to be capable of mixing it off a £9 higher mark for its most recent win in Utah remains to be seen. This is a much better race. Now, Mon Miral uh, came back to form in great style at Cheltenham last attempt for Paul Nichols. Um, gone up £6, but has a chance of a very famous double, should still be competitive because in his time it's been a really good horse. Cuthbert Dibble is five pounds better off with uh, Mon Miral for finishing third in the Vitemps and is a, an up and coming young stay. While Bold Endeavour for Nicky Henderson gets a pull at the weights and was staying on in fourth that day and won't be far away. Now Nicky Henderson's horses at Cheltenham, as we all know, were really down and out. Um, they, they, they were under a massive cloud, but they've roared back to form at Aintree this week with Sir Gino, and of course, uh, Jean Bon was terrific uh, winning uh, earlier on Friday. He also has Chantry House, who is not out of this if he can come back to form. Uh, and he's got a rank outside of that. He's going to take a bit of uh, finding called Russian Ruler. Now, Willie Mullins often has loads of runners in these big handicaps, but he relies on just one horse in this race. And it's a horse called Fine Margin, who was back down to favouritism at the Dublin Racing Festival at Leopardstown in February, but ran an absolute shocker. It was actually too bad to be true. So if you judge the horse on its previous run at Haydock, when it was second in a decent staying handicap hurdle, it would have to have a chance here. It's about a 12 or 14 to one chance is fine margin. Other Irish Raiders include Black Bamboo for John Joe Murphy, who's run consistently well in good handicaps over in Ireland, and Ailey Rose, who'll probably run from the front, but she'd probably need a mud bath if she's going to uh, prevail here and uh, her connections will be doing a rain dance on Merseyside, no doubt. Uh, but um, the horse that um, I want to take you to here 
because I am backing two in the race. One I'll be backing, and I've tipped that up and out in front. But the other one, which is a similar price, is um, a horse called Lord Snooty. Uh, Lord Snooty is trained by Christian Williams over in um, West Wales and is the mount of Jack Tudor. Now, Christian, of course, has got quite a big chance in the Grand National with Kitty's Light, but he could really start the day off the bank with Lord Snooty. Now, this horse ran a shocker last time out. He was pulled up at Utoxeter, but sometimes you've got to look a little bit deeper than just the bare figure, and it transpires that the trainer reported the horse really resented the tongue tie, uh, was never happy on the way to the start, at the start, jumped off, was an unhappy horse, and sensibly his jockey pulled him up. So uh, that is... Um, a sensible thing to have done because if you judge him on his previous run against Cuthbert Dibble at Haydock the time before um, he has got a massive chance here because he's got a really big pull in the weights with that rival now he's only had 11 runs has Lord Snooty in his career his only win came over three and a quarter miles at Warwick in a handicap hurdle last season but that run at uh, Haydock in November on ground uh, that wouldn't have been as soft as he prefers he liked the ground if it stays soft I think gives him a proper chance. So it's 16 to 1 each way at the time of this recording for six places with Bet365 amongst others. I think Lord Snooty is going to go very, very well indeed, along with my other selection, which I've recommended at Out in Front. And so I'll take you on to my selection for the Grand National. What it is, of course, um, a marvellous, marvellous race. Uh, as I've mentioned, the uh, fences aren't what they used to be but it is still going to be a massive spectacle. We've got two previous winners in the race, and they're both going to be on the premises, surely. Last year's winner, Cora Grumbler for Lucinda Russell, who deserves a tonic after losing a very good horse at Aintree on Friday. And uh, Noble Yates for Emmett Mullins, who, of course, won it two years ago, and again ran a stormer last year to finish fourth behind Cora Grumbler. Both of these two national stars are going to be in the mix. Vanillier was second last year for Gavin Cromwell, flew up the running, but the record of horses that finished second in the Grand National coming back is pretty dire, so that's put me off him. The Irish national winner of last year is I Am Maximus, one of a number of horses for William Mullins, really classy horse who stays well, runs in the colours of J.P. McManus, who's having a wonderful meeting. He also has the William Mullins train meeting of the waters and the Cheltenham Festival winning mayor, uh, Limerick Lays for Gavin Cromwell, and the race his full brother has just won uh, a big race at Aintree on Friday. So things are, are looking uh, really good there for uh, that family. If the ground dries out, then uh, the Christian William trains Kitty's Light, I think could be a massive gamble. Uh, I think there will also be a big public um, support for Christian, given what his family had been through with his little girl. And it would be the most uh, emotional victory if uh, Kitty's Light were to win but its hopes rest on the sun shining if it doesn't i think he's going to struggle now as i say i'm backing two in the race one of which i've already tipped it out in front i've got a group of five horses at big prices here that i think are set to run very very well and they include my selection for you here they're headed by last year's seventh juan marge who is trained by paddy griffin he jumped around here absolutely beautifully last season he was foot perfect he was very prominent, just got tired in the last 150 yards, was a close seventh. If he's ridden with a little bit more restraint, his odds of 66 to 1 could look quite silly. Galvin for Gordon Elliott, one of eight runners for the stable. I think he's been laid out for this race this year. I know Gordon's targeted a few of them at this race, but he stays well. He handles the ground. Last year, it was just unfortunate. He came down at the first fence in the race, but he ran very nicely last time out over hurdles, a prep race over an inadequate trip, and I think he is one at 25 to 1 or so. Indeed, all of Gordon Elliott's runners are 25 to 1 or bigger, and that's big for a trainer who's won the race three times since 2007. Another one for Millie, Willie Mullins with um, a chance is Mr. Incredible, who was third in the Kim Muir uh, last year at Cheltenham and was going really nicely just in behind the leaders in the National last year when he unseated his rider only because the saddle slipped. So... He was so unlucky, and they've clearly been keeping the horse fresh. Um, and they've been giving him a run this season. That was in the Midlands National uh, at Utoxeter four weeks ago. He ran a pretty good race to be second there. And he's had a nice break since then. 
I, I think he could go, you know, really very, very nicely indeed. Marla Mission is another one that I think is going to run big. Um, he was in front in the National Hunt Chase at last year's Cheltenham Festival when he came down two out. He was an excellent second as well in the Hansi, stepping up in trip here. I think he's got to be there or thereabouts. But the one I'm tipping you here at um, Sportsbet is a horse who I actually think it just wouldn't surprise me if he went off something very close to favouritism. And his name is Panda Boy. Panda Boy is trained by Martin Prassel and is the mount of JJ Slevin. He was fifth in last year's Irish National over three miles, five furlongs. And he's been placed both over fences and over hurdles on his last two starts in really hot handicap company uh, in Ireland. I think he's got plenty going for him and I think he's fairly handicapped. He ran a real cracker when he was second to meeting of the waters in the Paddy Power Chase at Leopardstown's big Christmas meeting. And he's now 11 miles better off with that rival. Um, and then he again ran really well uh, in a hot handicap hurdle uh, last time out, probably running over hurdles to protect his chase rating. And that was when he was second to Maxim in the Leopardstown handicap hurdle at the Dublin Racing Festival in February. Now the ground should be fine. Um, he stays, he's a good stayer, and as long as he gets that little bit of uh, rubber the green, the luck in running that you need in a Grand National, I think Panda Boy is going to run very, very big indeed. He has been backed, he was 16 to 1, I think, earlier on Friday, 12 to 1 when I made my notes, but I think he's been down to 11 to 1. 11 to 1 each way for six places with the likes of William Hill, 888 and Lambrooks at the time of this recording. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes off single figures and isn't far off uh, being favourite for this race. I think he's got a lot going for him, uh, along with those others that I mentioned towards the end of this analysis. So whatever you back, first of all, I hope you get a run for your money. And uh, that's what we all like to have, uh, get around the first circuit and then hope for the best. Uh, but I think Panda Boy is going to run big, and um, I commend him to you as my selection. I'll be back same time next week with more. Best of luck, whatever you back in the Grand National this year. Bye-bye for now.